Okay, so today we'll be talking about structures in C language. C structures. Structures is a user-defined data type that allows to combine data items of different kinds. Structures are used to represent a record. That means it can be a combination of several variables. So here's an example of a record for an employee. We have employee number, the employee name, maybe the department number, and the salary rate. So we combine this in a single unit, then we can use the structure in C language. How do we define a structure in C language? So we can use this format. We have here struct followed by the structure tag and then open curly braces. Then we have here the member definition. So we can have several member definitions. Then close curly braces. And then we have here one or more structure variable. Each member definition is a normal variable declaration. So just how we declare integers, character arrays, or maybe even arrays, float, etc. So here is an example of defining a structure. So we have struct M is our structure tag. And then open curly braces, curly brace. We have integer M no car M name or a character array M name which denotes employee name, integer depth no, float salary, and we have here the employees variable. So this is our variable. Now, how do we access structure members? So a structure is composed of several variables. So how can, I, how can we access the individual members? So we use the access operator. This is, it is actually a period. The member access operator is coded as a period between the structure variable and the structure member that we wish to access. So to show you a, an example, let's say we have here struct M and we have here the members. We have M no, M name, depth no, and salary. And we have the variable employees. So if you want to access employee name, in our example, print F employee name, percent S, backslash N. So how do we access that? So we use the name of the variable, which is employees, followed by our access operator, which is actually a period or a dot, then followed by the name of the member. So employees dot M name. So that is how we access members of the structure. Let's have another example. So we have here structure M, again M, then we have the several several members, we have M no, M name, depth no, and salary. And in our main program, so this is the main function of our program, we declared a variable employee using the structure M. So we have a variable employee. Then on the next codes, we assign values to the members of the structure. So, for example, employee number, so employee that F no is equal to 111. So, we assign this value to F no. And then for employee name, since it is, a, it is an array of character, we cannot use equal, but we use the function str copy, string copy. So, we assign Juan de la Cruz to employee name. And then employee department number, we assign the value 10. And then salary, we have here 15. Thousand. So we will continue the code on the next slide. So we have employee number. So on this line, employee number is a percent D because employee number is a decimal value, which it is an integer. So employee dot M no. And then here we we're going to print the value of employee name. So I place here S because it is a string or a string of characters or an array of characters. Negative 30 means it is aligned to the left. Percent D again, a decimal number for our department number. And for salary, it's, it's a float. So I use here 9.2F. So I located nine spaces 
with two decimal places for salary. How do we use structure as function arguments? So in this example, we declared a variable. We use the same structure. We declared a variable m1. And then we called a function named printm using that variable m1. So the code for the function is something like this. So void printm struct m. m. This is the data type. This is struct m. And then followed by the argument. So m is our argument. So the value of m1 will be passed to m. And in this case now, how do we print the members? So the same with the previous one. So we have m dot m no m dot m name m dot depth no and m dot salary. So just like in our previous slide. So nothing special about that. But what if instead of the variable we we are going to use pointers to structures? So in th in this line we declared m pointer which is actually a pointer to a data type named struct m or struct m. In this line, we declare the variable m1 so of the data type m. And then in this line now, we assign the address of m1. That's why we place here a number zan that will give us the address of m1 to m pointer. Because as we know, M pointer is actually a pointer to the data type M. So M pointer it contains the address of M1. And then in our in this part, we use the address, we pass the address. This is actually what we call passing by reference. So we pass the address of M1. So how do we do that? Or how do we declare or how do we write the code for the function? So the function will be something like this, struct m asterisk m. So this is actually a pointer because again, what we're passing is not the value of m, but the address of m. Now, why do we do that? We usually do that if, let's say there are cases wherein we can change the values of the members inside the function and the changes will be reflected outside this function. So once the function returns to the calling program or calling function or another function that calls this function, then the changes we have here will actually change the variable itself because we pass the address, not only the value. So what's different here is we if we pass the pointer, we pass the address, we don't use the that operator now. We use dash and then greater than sign to access the value. So that ends the pointers here. I'll uh, just review pointers. And most probably on our next videos, we'll have more examples of pointers.